Well, that's inconvenient. Today, we're back in my Nissan Promo P12, and there's a minor fault that's been bugging me for a while. So let's see if we can do something about it. So, if we look over here to the right of the steering wheel, we have this air vent. And as you can see, it moves up, no problem. It moves left, absolutely fine. It moves to the right, no problems whatsoever. But when I move it down, like so, and then release, it jumps, it jumps back up. So I can't direct the airflow to where I want it to be. So I'm having a quick look on eBay to see if I can get a replacement vent from a scrapped Nissan Primera, but I'm not having much luck. It seems globally there's a choice of one vent that fits this car, £16.59, which isn't too bad, but it is in Lithuania, which is a very long way from here, so it would take a long time to arrive, but also the seller has got terrible feedback from his customers. This guy says, Item not as described, seller just doesn't care, avoid, and blah, blah, blah. Someone else says, arrived damaged, needs better packaging. And someone else says they bought something and it arrived covered in paint. Yeah, I think we're going to have to fix what we've got. Now, when this car was newer, I didn't have any trouble getting little bits and pieces for it from eBay. And this, as you can see, is a interior door handle for the front left side. And the reason I replaced it is because this silver trim is all bubbling up and separating. The camera's not showing it very well. It looks worse in real life. And it's also tearing there and indeed a bit further down. So I was able just to buy a whole new handle for very little money and swap it over. Actually, thinking about it, I didn't swap the entire handle. All I did was replace the actual trim. So how did I do that? Oh, yes, it just separates like that. Yes, it's all coming back to me now. So this is the original piece of trim that was there. I bought the entire new handle from a scrap car, which included this piece of trim, and just pop that on. Yes, that's right. I've got a few other bits and pieces as well. Look, these are buttons that sit on the steering wheel. And as you can see, much like the door trim, the silver veneer has come off there. In fact, the car was like that when I bought it, but very soon after, I was able to go on eBay and get those replacements. I don't suppose I'd be able to these days. <laughs> that is part of the sunroof, which I removed. It's a long story. Maybe I'll tell you one day. What do we have here? Oh, I'd forgotten about that. That is a rubber seal that sits at the bottom of the aerial on the roof, which someone kindly gave me. That's a new one, should it ever be needed. What else? Yeah, keys, some of which I'm not sure what they fit. Somewhere around here, I have an old AC compressor for this car, but I haven't seen it for years. It is here somewhere though. And this, well, that's not even from this car. That's the electric window switch from the Ford Focus that Mrs. Car Spy TV and I replaced some time ago. Anyway, looking through that box has given me time to think, and I reckon, I reckon we can fix that air vent or at least make it quite a bit better. So come on, let's have a go. So, as I mentioned, the problem is that the fins won't stay in the down position so I can't direct the air where I need it to be. So if we have a look here at this top fin here, for example, we can see it runs all the way along, stops there. Then there's a little gap where my screwdriver is. And then there's what we'll call the frame of the vent, this piece here. And that's replicated all the way down here on the left, a little gap at the end of each fin. And of course, it's the same story on the right, a little gap at the end of each fin. And these gaps are important because if they weren't there, the fins would just be jammed in position and wouldn't move at all. But what I'm wondering, and by all means, let me know what you think about this. If we were to shove something in, say, this gap here to make it a bit smaller, then when the fin is there in the downwards position, there might be enough friction just to hold the whole lot in place. What do you reckon? Good idea or terrible idea?
Well, there's only one way to find out if it's a good idea, and that's to have a go. And if you've been with me for a while here at Car Spy TV, you can probably guess what I'm going to use to fill that gap. Hang on. I've got some here somewhere. Oh, yes. Right, well, let's start with this very small piece of gaffer tape, which is just over a centimetre long, and I've got it at the end of some miniature long nose pliers. And what I'm going to do is shove it into this gap here, top left, because frankly, it's as good as any. And this should at least test the theory. So I'm not too worried about getting this neat and tidy at the moment, more just seeing if it works. Now, this would be a lot easier if there wasn't a camera in the way. Okay, well, that's clearly visible and I wouldn't leave it like that, but it should nonetheless establish whether the principle is sound. So let's move the vent down now. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So that is now staying in the down position. So that's good. What I need to do therefore is make this a bit tidier. Right, so I've started the game with a new piece of gaffer tape, which is a better shape and size. And once again, I've shoved it into that top left hand corner. Now I don't want this gaffer tape to look obvious and ugly and well, I don't think it does. If you want to see it, you've really got to make an effort. Hang on, let me shove the camera in as close as I can. Can you see that? Not really. In fact, to see it, you've got to open the driver's door, like so, and then really make an effort to peer in. And even with a torch on, which I have now, very difficult to see. And really, who's gonna go poking around inside there looking for a piece of gaffer tape. Not me. Now I know this is pedantic, but I did actually take one extra step to disguise the gaffer tape. So when you cut or tear this particular gaffer tape, you get this white edge. See that? And that was quite visible on the vent. So I put on my most pedantic hat, got a black pen out of the glove box, and then I just came down here and just coloured in the edge of that gaffer tape and it was worth it. It has made quite a difference. It's considerably harder to see now. <laughs> In other news, I've just dropped my little red screwdriver down there between the seat and the handbrake and yeah, my hand is far too big to get down there. Come on, come on. Oh, there we go. Come on, yes. Okay, so we know the repair looks all right, but does it actually work? Fingers crossed. Well, as before the vent goes up and stays there, left, right, but now it also goes down and stays there. No problem at all. Simple solutions are often the best. In other news, when I got in the car this morning, I found that Mrs. Car Spy GV had been here before me, and look, see this yellow thing? She'd balanced it on the steering wheel like that, as if it was driving. And to be fair, that was funny. Apparently it's a Care Bear, and for some reason it has a heart stamped on its backside. I don't know why either but I do know that this thing has haunting dead eyes and it keeps staring at me and one way or another, it has to go. So I'm just going to drop it down there into the cup holder, close the lid, lock him in and he will never be seen or heard from again. Bliss. Anyway. If you enjoyed watching me be cruel to Care Bears, lose my screwdriver and find yet another way to repair a car with gaffer tape, you're more than welcome to subscribe to Car Spire TV. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.